Hey guys, Dr. Russ coming for a fantastic chemistry video, and today we're talking about study of chemical reactions. We've waited a long time, and now we're finally here. All right, you guys all know most of the stuff already. Overall reaction, reactants go to products. That's a chemical reaction. You already know that. There's two things we study in chemistry, chemical reactions. Thermodynamics, the study of the energy change, and the kinetics, study of how fast reactions go. So we'll be talking a little bit more about that as this chapter goes on. Now there's this thing called mechanism that you're going to learn to love. You're going to hate it at first, but then you're going to learn to love it because it tells you all the answers. Okay? It is a step-by-step -step description of how a reaction probably happens. And it tells you a lot. It tells you a lot of information about the reaction. It's actually really kind of fun once you get the hang of it. Let's look at our first mechanism. We're going to explain how methane can react with chlorine in the presence of heat or light to give chloromethane. We're going to try to explain that. Okay. Now, the first thing you want to notice is that the reaction requires heat and or light to start the reaction. Notice the most effective wavelength is blue, which is absorbed by the chlorine gas. So this is a big hint about what happens first in this reaction. Many molecules of product are formed from absorption of only one photon of light, a chain reaction. We'll talk more about that. But let's get into the mechanism. Free radical chain reaction. The first step is initiation. Second step is propagation. Third step is termination. Now, Initiation is where the reaction starts, where everything begins. It's where the first, radi first, first what are called radicals are formed. Then propagation occurs. The, the intermediate reacts with a stable molecule to produce another reactive, immediate, reactive intermediate and a product molecule. So that's propagation. Okay? Terminate, uh, initiation. Radicals are formed somehow. We'll talk about that in a minute. Propagation. A radical attacks a, a, a non-radical, makes it a radical, and a product is formed. And then termination, side reactions that destroy the reactive intermediate. Okay? That basically undesired side reaction. All right. Step one, initiation. Initiation, formation of the chlorine atom. Now, what we have is we have a chlorine molecule. Oops. We have a chlorine molecule, and the light, the light from the source, whatever, however we're shining the light on this molecule, it's absorbed in that bond. And that what that does is it causes the electrons to do this. There you go. And what this is doing is what this is saying to me is that one electron from the bond goes to the chlorine one electron bond goes to the other chlorine. So each chlorine gets one of the electrons in the bond. We'll talk more about this later. It's called homolytic cleavage. And you'll get two chlorine radicals. Okay? It's homolytic cleavage. You form two radicals. And all this happens because you pump light into the reaction. The radicals form, and away we go. Now these are all what are we what we call free radicals. Now notice every free radical has an unpaired electron. Okay? That's a radical. Whenever you have an unpaired electron that is known as a radical. Now notice there is no formal charge. Because there's free, there's no charge. They're free. Oops. That means no charge. Because if you go to the store and something is free, there is no charge, right? These are free radicals. They have no formal charge. If you do the tool or the, or the mental exercise I showed you on how to determine formal charge, you'll see none of these things have formal charge because they're free. All right. Let's talk about the first propagation step. We have ourselves a chlorine radical. It's going to attack the methane radical. How do I know? Well, because the only reactive 
the only reactants we have are chlorine and methane. I know because if we keep the reaction in mind, I know it's CH4 plus chlorine gives with the presence of UV light will give me CH3Cl plus HCl. So I know in this reaction I have to break one of the carbon hydrogen bonds from here. How do I know that? Because I only have a CH3 over here. Okay, there's only a CH3 over there. So I'm going to have to break the carbon hydrogen bond from here. I'm going to have to make a carbon chlorine bond somehow. And I have to make a hydrogen chlorine bond somehow. So you have to keep in mind what you're trying to do in the reaction. The first step, propagation. Or well, first step is initiation. This radical, this radical here will collide with one of these hydrogens on this methane. I'm picking this one because it's closest. All right? So they're going to collide. Now, when they collide, they're going to react. Now, we can't show the animation of the collision. It's just not possible, right? So what we do is we draw a fishhook arrow from here. Now, remember, a fishhook arrow means one electron moves. That's what a fishhook arrow means. One electron is moving. Okay? A fishhook arrow from the bond. This is a bond forming step. One fishhook arrow, a second fishhook arrow, meet, form a bond. Now remember, there's two electrons in this bond. So where does the other one go? It goes to the carbon. Okay? This is a three electron movement. One electron from the free radical, one from the bond, another one from the bond going to carbon. The net result of this is we form a bond between hydrogen and chlorine, which is good, right? Because we made it one of the products. That's a good thing. Plus a methyl radical. This is a propagation step. We've made the methyl radical, we broke the carbon-hydrogen bond, which was necessary. If you look here, we have CH4, now we have CH3, so this carbon had to lose one of its hydrogens. We did that here. This chlorine gained a hydrogen to make this product right here. So this is a propagation step. Now, we're going to continue down this road. We have a methyl radical. We have a methyl radical, and we always have to keep in mind the reaction. Never take your eye off the prize. We have CH4 plus Cl2 in the presence of UV light will give us methyl chloride plus HCl. Now, we've already made this product. Okay, We've already broken the chlorine-chlorine bond. We've already broken the CH bond. Now we have to make the carbon-chlorine bond. How do we do that? React it with another chlorine molecule. There you go. So another chlorine molecule happens by, again, the three electron single headed arrow or fish hook arrow movement, where the radical attacks this chlorine. One of the electrons from the chlorine chlorine bond meet here to make a bond between the carbon and the chlorine. The other electron in the bond goes to chlorine. Okay? Now, what does this do? This does something very, very interesting. First of all, we make, one, or we make the other product, right? So here is that product. But now notice this sets up a situation in which we now have another chlorine radical. So now this chlorine radical can go back to the beginning of the reaction and react with more methane. can simply start reacting with more methane again. And it will propagate the reaction. It will keep the reaction going. And that's a chain reaction. When the reaction that you're trying to do generates the product you want and the same reactive intermediate that you started the reaction with, this is a chain reaction. It will keep going until you run out of material, which is pretty cool. Now, the overall reaction. First propagation step. 
So we took methane, chlorine radical, fish hook arrows to get CH3 radical plus HCl. Second propagation step, methane radical plus chlorine gas. Now I hope you're asking yourself, why am I using chlorine gas? Why am I using chlorine? In the initiation step, didn't we form two radicals? Two chlorine radicals? Why didn't I just combine them? Ah, good question. Why didn't I just combine, for example, let's, let's write it up here. Why didn't I just say, okay, this methyl radical and this chlorine radical would just simply react? So much easier, just two arrows. Because it's probably not what's going to happen. First of all, this is what they call a termination step. You're not going to get another free radical from this. It's going to stop the reaction. So that's no fun. That's no good. You want this, you want to show the, the chain reaction because it's known to work that way. It's a chain reaction. Okay. The second reason is a little more fundamental. Chlorine radical is very reactive. So it's going to react as soon as it forms, it reacts. As soon as it forms, it reacts. Okay. So just in terms of kinetics, the concentration of chlorine radical is lower than the concentration of Cl2. Concentration of Cl2 is high. What's the first rule of reactions? What has to happen? Collisions. Well, if the concentration of this is high and the concentration of this is low, you'll get more collisions between this and the Cl2. So that's what's going to react, and that's why I, I'm reacting with the Cl2, not with the chlorine radical. Do not react it with the chlorine radical. In fact, never show termination on my exams. Never, unless I specifically ask you to show termination, do not show termination steps on my exams. There you go. So there's the overall reaction, and there is the re reaction at the bottom. This is what, this is what actually occurred. And here's the mechanism. Okay, so here's termination, when two radicals come together. Now, again, this isn't going to happen very much because the concentration of both radicals is very low. So this step probably won't happen very much. You can also have the two chlorine radicals that you formed come back together. I'm sure that happens. I'm sure they, they come apart and then they go back they come apart, they go back, they come apart, they go back numerous times before something else happens. You could have a situation where two methyl radicals will combine to make ethane. It's possible. Here's a very common uh, occurrence, though. One of the radicals will li literally hit the wall of the container and react with the wall and basically fuse itself to the wall. That's pretty common, actually. Uh, that's a common termination. And you, the way you uh, deal with that is you just keep shining light on your reaction to keep the, the radical population uh, growing so that the reaction will keep going. All right, this is a good place to leave it. So we'll come back in the next video to talk about uh, equilibrium constants and all that kind of stuff. And with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon.